I'm Amy the Bunny Lady, and this is my partner, Teddy Bear. <laughs> and today we're going to talk to you about some of the important things that you want to include in a rabbit first aid kit. If you are new to our channel, welcome. We give tips and tricks for how to make sure you have a happy and healthy bunny in your home. So if that's the kind of thing that you're interested in, go ahead and hit that subscription button and the notification bell next to it so you never miss any of our weekly videos. The first and most important thing that you want to include in your rep first aid kit is just the contact information of your veterinarian. It's important that you have this information in a very, very easy to find place so that if the time comes when there is some kind of emergency, you can very easily go find it and give your veterinarian a call so that you can you know, get your rabbit in and get your rabbit help as soon as you can. It's also important to make sure that it is written down and not just on an electronic device like your phone or computer because this way if you happen to lose power and you need help you will still be able to get the address and be able to get your rabbit to the veterinarian. It, it is also really helpful for if you ever have someone pet sitting for your rabbit and your rabbit gets sick while you're gone they will have your veterinarian's information readily available. <laughs> I love you. The next thing that I want to talk about is something called cymethicone. It is also known as baby gas drops. This is important for rabbits who have frequent gas. Well, gas can end up getting trapped in your rabbit's digestive system, in their intestines. It can be a little painful for them and it can also end up leading to problems such as diastasis if they can't end up passing this gas. So cymethicone is incredibly useful for helping your rabbit when they have these symptoms of gas. So what you will commonly see when your rabbit has gas is your rabbit will be pressing their belly against the ground. You will also probably see symptoms such as your rabbit is refusing to eat and they might not be pooping. So what you should do if you notice these symptoms is you should give your rabbit one cc, one milliliter of this cymethicone every hour for three hours. And if the problem is gas, if it's something that can be solved with cymethicone, your rabbit should be back to normal, their behavior should be back to normal within that amount of time. If it's not, then this is an emergency situation and you should really get your rabbit to a veterinarian as soon as possible. But using cymethicone as that first layer of defense and giving it to them can often prevent an expensive trip to uh, the vet when it's just that your rabbit has gas and it's not any more serious problem. The next thing you definitely want to include in your rabbit's first aid kit is a packet of critical care. Now I do have a whole video going over critical care and why it's so important, but this is basically what you're going to feed your rabbit after a surgery or if you're helping them recover from some kind of illness. Critical care is a special formula that you can mix into a, a yogurt-like consistency and it can be syringe fed to your rabbit. You can hand feed them if they're not eating. It can also help give them enough calories and enough nutrients if they're not eating enough on their own. It's something that can be a lifesaver for rabbits who are not eating because rabbit health really does depend on the constant movement of their digestive system. So you really want to have this around just in case, especially if for some reason you can't get to the vet, but you can, you can give them a call, ask them for the recommendations. It's very possible that they'll recommend that you give them critical care. You always want to have a bag on hand just in case, because it can really be essential for helping your rabbit recover. In order to feed your rabbit the critical care or the cymethicone gas drops, you also want to make sure you have uh, various syringes. Usually the vet will end up giving you more than you need so then you have a lot of leftovers that you can just put into your medical kit to make sure that you have them available. If at the moment you do not have any you can also buy big packages of them pretty cheaply but even if you have just a couple available that's perfectly fine. You'll want to have at least one bigger one available for the critical care so at least like six millimeters, six or ten millimeters milliliters <laughs> milliliters are good for the critical care one but any syringe that will have at least one milliliter in it for the cymethicone for the gas drops is good for that and then of course if your rabbit does have any medication that they need to take you want to make sure you have syringes available that are suitable for the amount of the medication that they need on that same line of thought, it is also important to make sure that you include your rabbit's medications into in their first aid kit. This will help you keep them all in one place. For example, if your rabbit has an arthritis medication, you can put it into the first aid kit. 
you know where it is and it, you don't have to worry about losing it and then having to pay for a whole extra uh, bottle of it because that can end up being expensive. Any medication that needs to be refrigerated, you want to make sure that you have a certain section of the fridge that you keep it in so you don't worry about losing it behind like the mustard and the ketchup and you know exactly where it is all the time. In addition to these important emergency items, you also want to make sure you have all of the basics in your first aid kit. So you want to make sure that you have some bandages and gauze pads and q-tips and just those little things that are really helpful if your rabbit gets a little cut or scrape. You just want to make sure you have them around in a place where you know where they are so that you can help your rabbit in the case of a minor injury. For these types of very small like scr scratches or something like that, you also want to have a disinfectant spray and a disinfectant cream with you. Um, this way, if it's a small cut, you can just spray it a little bit with a pet disinfectant spray to make sure that it doesn't end up getting infected. For disinfectant sprays, Vetericin is generally a trusted solution to use with uh, pets. You can also use Neosporin as a disinfectant cream to put on a small cut, but you do want to make sure that you use the original cream solution and don't use one that has any added pain relief because this usually contains amounts that are not safe to use with rabbits, so make sure to go for the original antibiotic cream with no added ingredients, no added extras into it. Another very important piece of your rabbit's first aid kit is actually a heating pad. Sometimes this is going to be too big to actually include in the first aid kit, so keeping it right next to the first aid kit is also perfectly okay. <laughs> Uh, but this is actually very important because rabbits, when they have health problems, oftentimes their body starts to shut down and their body temperature starts to drop dramatically. Having a heating pad around to, it can actually be a lifesaver. It can help you get your rabbit's body, body heat back up and help them recover. It can be an essential first step to take when you notice that your rabbit is sick. This is especially important for conditions such as geostasis, where your rabbit's body temperature just starts to drop once they start to get sick. When giving a rabbit the heating pad, you don't want to put the heating pad directly next to them. You do want to wrap it in a towel first, so keeping a couple towels on hand and in the vicinity of your first aid kit can also be important and very useful. Because you don't want to have the heating pad directly next to your rabbit because you don't want to risk burning them. So putting it in a towel and then next to your rabbit is usually the way to go. It's also really useful to keep your grooming supplies in the same place. This way you don't worry about losing your nail clippers or losing your rabbit's brush or anything like that. Keeping it all in the same place can be really helpful. So I always like to include my the little nail clippers and my brush and I have a, a grooming glove that I put it in the first aid kit so that I know where they are. Especially since like with nail clippers, you're not really going to use them all the time. Maybe every couple of months when you need to clip your rabbit's nails. So it, it's very possible. I've definitely lost pairs in the past, so I find it a lot easier to just keep it in the same place. Keep it in the first aid kit. I know where the first aid kit is, and now I will definitely be able to find them again. <laughs> Along the same lines, you want to make sure you have something like styptic powder available, because sometimes when you're clipping rabbit's nails, you end up clipping into the quick. It's unfortunate when it happens, but especially if rabbit's nails are dark and you can't see the quick, Sometimes it does. It can help to make it sting a little less and it can help prevent the bleeding because <laughs> rabbit nails can bleed surprisingly much. It's not a big deal if you do that. Most of the time rabbits will just clean it, they'll clean themselves off and they'll be fine. But if that does happen, you want to have a little bit of that styptic powder available. Another alternative to the styptic powder is actually cornstarch. Now this, it doesn't have the pain relief or disinfectant power, but it's actually safe for rabbits to ingest in small amounts. In this case, when your rabbit is likely to be licking their nails afterwards, it may be better to use cornstarch and just have a baggie of cornstarch available in your first aid kit. That way you can use that to stem the blood, make it stop bleeding, but it's also less harmful if your rabbit goes and licks it afterwards. So that is also another alternative to the styptic powder. As a bonus, I'm going to include this even though you can't have it actually in your first aid kit, but it's really important to have some kind of uh, cooling pad or cooling water, like frozen water bottle or something around in your freezer, of course. It can't actually be in the first aid kit. 
but uh, this it can be really useful especially in warmer months because rabbits they have a heavy fur coat they weren't made for hot weather so having a cooling pad available to keep your rabbit from getting heat stroke or overheating in the summer can be very useful like with the heating pad you wouldn't put this directly next to your rabbit you would wrap it in a towel and then put it next to your rabbit but it can be very useful for those hot months and it's definitely something to have available so that's what I keep in my rabbit first aid kit. If you're wondering what to do if your rabbit gets sick or even how to tell if your rabbit gets sick, because sometimes the symptoms can be very subtle, you can check out my is my rabbit sick video so that you can learn the symptoms to look out for. If you found this video useful or helpful in any way, then give it a thumbs up. And I do hope that we will see you next week.